mean square for each one of them. Degrees of freedom is this. So when you see MSW, MSW value here, this guy here is this divided by this, will give you this. Then MSW is also SSB, SSW value here, divided by degrees of freedom denominator will give you this. Then my F computed, this divided by this will give you that. The p-value approach we did not read, okay? However, this is F computed. We are comparing it to what? F critical. And this one too, I can delete this, delete that, delete this. I can just manipulate the table for you to answer the questions. So this compared to this means that this is greater than this. So we reject the null hypothesis. In simple terms, this is just one step of finding out whether differences exist among the groups of data or the independent data that you have. But the question is that if we are saying that there are differences that exist because we have rejected the null hypothesis, can we find out whether indeed, remember we said mu one is not equal to mu two, it's not equal to mu what three, to say that not all the means are equal. However, there could be possibility that mu one is actually equal to mu three, or mu two is not equal to mu what three, or mu two is equal to what mu three, then mu one and mu two are not what equal. What we have done is to do a general conclusion that indeed differences exist among the independent sample data that we have. However, as long as research is concerned, or if you are an advertising manager or sales manager, and indeed based on the new product that you've brought, you've compared it to other products within the firm, and based on the sales, you've indicated to management that, oh, there are differences in the profits actually as far as putting all the profit together. There are differences for each of the product that you sold. Then your manager could ask you, the differences, are you comparing product one to product two or product one to product three or product three to product two? So that we will know exactly where the differences are coming from. And that is the continuation of using the ANOVA, uh, that's the ANOVA test. What we do in this case to find out whether the differences exist between just two of the groups or not, we do what we call pairwise comparison. And by pairwise comparison, we have two approach or two methods that we can use. The first one is called the Tukey Kramer critical range. Somebody will say Tukey Kramer critical range, it doesn't matter. Then the other one is the Fisher LSD. Fisher's LSD is the other one we can also use. Each one of them can help you to do the pairwise comparison. So I'm going to take you through each one of them in simple terms, and they are also straight away. If we are using the 2K Kramer critical range, we are being asked to find this guy here, Q alpha. We already know MSW, so that is not a problem for us. We are only going to find, first of all, the Q alpha and substitute it into this whole formula here to give us what we call critical range. Okay, then again, we need to find again, because we want to know when that differences exist between each of the groups that we have, we need to find the difference between the, the sample mean different between the first sample, the second sample, the first sample, the third sample, then the second sample and the third sample, all depending on the number of samples that you have. So we are going to compute what we call the 
absolute mean differences. Okay, the absolute mean differences. So I'll pick just the first data. That's club one. I already know the mean for club one. Okay, I know the mean for club two. And I know the mean for club what, three. So what this is saying that come back. Let me go back to sharing. Uh, can you share? Let me quickly erase the board. Okay, so we are looking at the, let me use the 2K crema first. Uh, whiteboard. I like this color. So 2K crema. Okay, which says that we simply don't have to struggle. We are looking for the critical range. And by critical range, we are looking for Q alpha times the square root of MSW divided by two, or into bracket one over NI plus NJ, okay? All right, so N I N J, where we define N I as N I and N J sample sizes from populations, where I goes I and J are what the same in this case. Okay, so just note that if if all the sample sizes are not the same, N I becomes the small one, then N J becomes the bigger sample sizes. Okay, so let's move on. In this case, I said that we need to find the absolute mean difference among the groups. So I have to find the absolute mean difference for, we have three different um, groups. So if I pick the mean for the first sample, I'm subtracting it for the mean second sample, Again, mean sample mean for first sample compared to the last sample, which is M3, X bar three. Then the absolute sample mean for X bar two, X bar three. I'm looking at absolute values means that I'm ignoring negatives if they exist. This was 249.2 minus 226. This one was again 249.2 minus 205.8. Then the, between the club two and club three, 226 minus 205.8, okay? So the absolute mean value, this is 23.2, 43.4, and 20.2, okay? This is what I have done, the absolute mean difference. Now, I need to also go and find Q alpha, okay? And by Q alpha, you don't need to struggle. You use the table to do Q alpha so that it doesn't stress you at all. So there is another table I have. That should be in the slide. I didn't provide that one to you for you. So when we finish the lecture, you can get that table from the lecture notes so you can use it for your consumption, okay? So let me quickly find that value here. Okay, this one again, you have D1, D2. Q alpha here, okay? 
remember that our alpha is still 0 0.05, okay? So I'm saying that Q 0 0.05, D1 and D2. D1 in this case again, D1 is your, the K, okay, sample. Then D2, D2 in this case is also the N minus one, okay? K was three, N minus one, 15 minus three, 15 minus K, sorry, N minus K. So we have three and what, 12. So please, let me go to the, let's go here quickly. Where is my table? Let me share this. Um, okay, this side. See, that's the table we have here. So alpha is 0 0.05, okay? And we have K to be three. Then D2 is K, N minus K is also 12. In this case, by coming vertically down here, horizontally here, that is 3.77. So from the table again, my Q alpha is equal to 3.77. So I can now compute the critical range, which is saying that 3.77 times uh, MSW value was, uh, what was our MSW? MSW was 93.3 divided by two, one over five plus one over five. This will give you 16.285, okay? So we are now going to compare by the Tuke Krema rule in order to find out which the difference that exists, which of the groups would have that particular differences? Or are they all different from each other? We compare the critical range value to the absolute mean value. So between X1, the club one and club two, their absolute mean value is 23.2, okay? Therefore, between X bar one, minus x bar two, 23.2. That is greater than 16.285. So indeed, we can say that there are differences between club one and club two, okay? In simple terms, if the absolute mean value is greater than the critical range, that's what you do. Then each one of them, of course, there are differences that exist among or between the pairwise or the pair that you have, okay? But if the critical range is greater than, let's say that uh, the last one, the club two and club three, their uh, differences were supposed to be maybe 12, okay? Then our conclusion is that although differences exist among the groups, there are no differences between X bar club two and club what three. The difference is actually between what? Club one, club two, and club one and club what three. That is when your critical range is greater than the absolute mean difference between the two. And this is in simple terms how we use the, uh, the TK Kramer to establish the differences between the two. Then for the Fisher's LSD test, in fact, the procedure is the same. We have to find the, what we call the LSD, okay? And LSD here, sorry, where, where is my, good. Sorry, guys, okay. Sure. <coughs> so what's here? <coughs> sorry. The LSD is also simple. It's not anything. Uh, it's also going to help us to find whether all pair, the pairwise comparison that you have done, where does the difference actually exist between 
each of the groups that you pick. Then again, we're saying that if you are comparing the LSD value, okay, compared to the absolute means, then we're also concluding that as long as the LSD value is less than each of the pair, it means that differences exist between each group. Anyone that gives you less 